Rocky Boyman previews Sunbelt Media Days. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Momentarily, we'll get to our guest for today. Uh, he's Rocky Boyman. He will be in New Orleans co-hosting the Sunbelt Media Days with Matt Stewart. We've already talked to Matt. Let's get a little bit different perspective uh, from Rocky Boyman. And there's a ton to go over for the first time in forever. It feels like the Sunbelt is set with their new teams. Uh, maybe some additional teams later on, but nothing anytime soon. Uh, and you got a bunch of storylines, South Alabama, Troy, Coastal Carolina, uh, JMU, uh, and then the surprise teams, maybe Texas State uh, and ODU. So with no further ado, uh, ESPN Plus's Rocky Boyman begins to preview Sunbelt Media Days. All right, welcome back to Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Dave Schultz, your host. We are looking forward to Sunbelt Media Days in New Orleans, and we are joined by the co-host. We had Matt Stewart on last week. We got Rocky Boyman on today. They'll be co-hosting Sunbelt Media Days uh, in New Orleans. Rocky went to Notre Dame. We sort of hold that against him, played in the NFL, among others, uh, with uh, the Bengals, and also an author, uh, self-author, self-publishing author, Rocky's Rules. I believe to, uh, Rocky's Rule uh, Monday was a shoulders and triceps, which we followed uh, to a T, by the way. Right. That's right. Absolutely. Get that lift in early. There you go. Dave, it's always a pleasure to be with absolutely. you. Enjoy, enjoy talking with you. Yeah. I think you were the first non-family member to subscribe to the podcast uh, last year. So I do appreciate that. Thanks for hopping on. Well, you, you do a really good job. I, I'm, I'm, I want to be uh, real honest about that. You do a good job. And I always like, you know, you know how, how much I love the Sun Belt and uh, getting uh, getting caught up and listening to your podcast there weekly is, is a good thing. Love it. Well, well, thank you so much. All right, let's talk about one of the issues that I don't understand is this whole JMU can't represent the Sun Belt, can't play in the championship ball game, and then, you know, can't represent uh, and can't play in a bowl game at, at all. I don't understand. Please explain to me why the level of football gets harder, but they're not allowed to participate uh, in the championship game uh, and, and then in a bowl game. It doesn't make any sense to me. And boy, did they take their frustrations out last year on Coastal Carolina. Absolutely. So uh, I'll preface this by saying I don't agree with the role of, of keeping them out of a conference title and all that sort of thing for a couple of years. But but here's how it was explained to me. Let's go back to 2014, which was that was the first year. Yeah, I kind of got a, my break into broadcasting. They gave me a Sun Belt right. package. I had a Sun Belt game every single week. And if you recall, 2014 was the same year Western Kentucky left, App State came in, Georgia Southern came in, right? right? And if you remember, Georgia Southern, I believe, went 8-0 that year. I remember, you know, being down calling a couple of those games. Willie Fritz was the head coach. So it was the same conversation as, as what happened last year with JMU. And, and I couldn't understand why. I went around and asked a lot of people. I asked Carl Benson, then the commissioner. Um, and how it was explained to me was – what they didn't want was a scenario where a FCS school in this case has a really good run, right? They have a really good team and they make the jump into the FBS and win, do a bunch, you know, do a bunch of great things, win a bunch of games, go to some bowls. And then in a more normal year, quote unquote, when they're not as strong, then they say, well, we can't compete anymore. And they jump back down to the FCS. They just didn't want a scenario. Again, how it was explained to me, they wanted to prevent a scenario where a school would just jump up when they knew they had a really good program and then jump back down when they did. I would argue that it's almost impossible with a transfer portal the way it is. It's hard to even know from year to year how good a school is going to be. So why, why even right. have that rule? Right. I mean, it's 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 ridiculous. I I don't agree with it, but but that's how it was explained to me after copious research. All right. Well, there's obviously ways around that, right? You put a limit on the years that you have to be uh, right. in, in in FBS, and then if you go back down, and then if you go back down to FCS, you're stuck there permanently. Can't make the jump back. So, yeah. if you want to come up to FBS, you got to stay there five, ten years, and then if you go back down to FCS, you are there forever. That I mean, I, I agree. I, if I just this don't super think genius that... can figure it out, anyone can. Right. 
Yeah, I, I just don't think a school would do all the things you have to do to make the jump if they didn't think they had a program that was good enough to you know to sustain getting into the into you know a higher conference and all that sort of thing. I don't like it, and uh, hopefully maybe there's some sort of waiver that JMU can can get this year. I know that there's discussions with that. Should they go on and have another good year like they did last season? We're talking to Rocky Boyman, co-host for Sunbelt Media Days with Matt Stewart on ESPN+. Plus. All right, let's lead that right into to JMU. They, like a lot of other schools, have to replace their quarterback, Todd Centeno. Where are we with JMU's uh, quarterback? They're looking at the transfer portal again. Yeah, it, it, it's looking from everything I've read. There's like four guys in the mix, right? right. Um, and it looks like the Arizona transfer, um, Jordan McLeod, is probably the guy, but he hasn't played in like two years, right? He was... Go back a couple years, he was at South Florida and had a pretty good year. Was a real athletic kid, made some plays. Didn't play at all last year, played sparingly in 2021. So he has the most experience. Um, you know, Alonzo Barnett is a guy that's been on that roster. And, you know, he, I guess, ran with the first team in the spring. There's a couple other guys there, a Wake Forest transfer involved. Um, but, but you know, um, you know, Coach Signetti, he's going to keep that card close to his vest like he did last year. I think it was like an hour before the game until he announced, hey, Todd right. Santeo is going to be the quarterback. So I imagine uh, it's going to be pretty much the same here. I'm going to try to dig on him here in, in a day or two and try to see if he'll tell me who that quarterback is going to be. But uh, it might just have to play out like it did last year. Well, for most of the cases, this is my first question at Sunbelt Media Day is who is the starting quarterback? All right. That's uh, the big question. And yeah. That is the big question outside of a handful of schools, and some of them are bringing in their quarterbacks. So some of that has been settled. Talking to Rocky Boyman, Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day, previewing Sunbelt Media Days Tuesday and Wednesday in New Orleans. All right. So App State has had this odd deal of having three quarterbacks in the last nine seasons. They go from, you know, eight-year starter to eight-year starter to, like, six-year starter, and now they are doing it again, right? The Raging Cajuns played three quarterbacks last year. Uh, App State has had three quarterbacks in about the last decade, and they very well could, again, be going with, like, a red shirt freshman who, in about three years, we're going to be like, he's been there forever. Right, right. I mean, mean, if you go back, what, like, Taylor Lamb? Is that correct? Wasn't he the quarterback years back? Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. They, they, they've. I mean, and what a luxury. I mean, talk about in today's world where if you get a quarterback for more than one season, it's like, oh my god. In in yes. the age of the transfer portal, which I mean, spoiler alert, that's one reason why I love Coastal to, to win the, the East this year because they got a guy. They're gonna have a quarterback that's gonna have four years of experience in Grayson McCall. But I, I you know, I, I look for App State regardless of who the quarterback is. I, I think that I think they make a jump back in. You know, they, they just recruit so well. It looks like they did go in the transfer portal and get a few things. You know, got two new coordinators. Um, last year, I just think the early season, you know, it was at 63 to 61 against North Carolina. They lost in the last play. That's a very emotional game. You win at Texas A&M, that's emotional. Game day comes and you win on a Hail Mary. Uh, it's just, I think they just kind of ran out of steam with a lot of stressful things uh, early right. in that season. But I, I expect them to make the jump back. And, um, again, regardless of who the quarterback is, I think go find somebody good. All right, let's take a time out. We'll come back. We'll talk more about Sunbelt Media Days happening Tuesday and Wednesday in New Orleans. Let me tell you a little bit about FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to over under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, let's get back to it. It's Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. More with ESPN Plus Sunbelt Media Days co-host, Rocky Boyman. Talking to Rocky Boyman, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. He's co-hosting Sunbelt Media Days with Matt Stewart, ESPN Plus. So you got a, you got a, a winter jacket for the Dome. We're in the hotel 
you're in the Mercedes Benz or the, I'm sorry, the Caesar Superdome. It's always freezing in there. Right? You probably have a bunch of lights on you, but I'm not sure how much that helps. Well, you know, Dave, I, I'm wearing my sleeveless suit, uh, like always. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. right. Got Got Rocky Boyman always taking us to the gun show. <laughs> Uh, um, all right. So let's let you did that segue in there. Grayson McCall went into the transfer portal, came back out of the transfer portal. He is not one, not two, but the three time Sunbelt offensive player of the year. But now he's got a new coach and Tim Beck, you know, I'm going it, to, it's maybe not the greatest of all comparisons, but when Bill O'Brien came into Alabama, they're like, are we running Bill O'Brien's offense? And Nick Saban's like, no, we're going to teach one guy, the new offense instead of teaching 40 guys, a new offense. Why would right. Tim Beck do wholesale changes in Grayson McCall's fourth season uh when maybe we'll just go with his strengths and tim beck can adjust but i got a feeling he runs a pro style offense maybe grayson mccall's looking like this is the better way to get to the pros we're gonna go with what tim beck uh wants to offer and how long does it yeah. take to adjust to that where, but what you know compared to he's thinking about it compared to reacting to it well first of all i, I think if you, you know that that's one of the the biggest questions uh, of of media day and of of this season is what kind of offense because that offense Jamie Chadwell ran there as you well know was one of the more unique things i've ever seen a Very triple much. option hybrid yeah. I, i've i've stolen some of it and instituted it on my son's 9 year old team but a lot of it is so complex i can't get 9 year olds to do it dave but uh, nevertheless i i think in answer to your question I, I think it'll be a little bit of a hybrid of, of, of both of them. I think, you know, you know, Beck has been around a long time, 12 years as a coordinator. He's been around Urban Meyer, Tom Herman, all the best. And, and I think if he were a young guy and this was like his first year coaching, I would expect him to, oh, we're going to do it my way and I'm going to set the world on fire and show what I do is the best. I think Tim Beck is saying, look, let, let's take what this guy does well uh, in a day and age where, it's hard to get experience on a football team because of the transfer portal. Let, let's take that valuable thing we have, run majority of what he's used to, but institute some of the things that, you know, Tim Beck has, has found works over the last decade plus too. So I think it'll be a little bit of a hybrid, but we'll be very interested to watch that offense and how it evolves. You're going all Herman Boone and sunshine with the nine-year-olds, aren't you? You can throw it a mile, but you can't pitch it five yards. You got to see the pitch. You got to see the right. pitch. That's what you're oh, doing, right? They drive me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> He's Rocky Boyman, locked on Sunbelt, your team every day, co hosting Sunbelt Media Days with Matt Stewart. All right. One of the quarterbacks that is coming from the East is Cam Fancher, which is a little bit interesting because he's a sophomore. And we thought maybe there was going to be a quarterback battle. Uh, maybe Charles Huff uh, has, is putting an end to that by bringing his quarterback to uh, some about media days in new orleans because there is a pennington waiting in the wings and when you have a pennington waiting in the wings the thundering herd fan base wants the pennington uh to play it's cole pennington chad's son uh so i, I kind of like the idea that either based on we're, the question is not gonna be asked because we're bringing camp fancher uh to media days or we're bringing camp fancher and we're gonna give cam a little bit of confidence boost that he's the guy or both i guess yeah, I mean, that'll be interesting. I think Cam did a good job last year. I, you know, I think they probably would, if you ask uh, Coach Huff, he probably wants a little more production out of that, out of that position. But, you know, how did he evolve? Uh, again, we're talking a, a luxury anymore in college football to have a quarterback with experience coming back on a team. So I, I bet that way is pretty heavy. But, look, like, like most coaches, he'll, he'll probably let that thing play out to some degree uh, in, in practice and fall camp and all that sort of thing. Uh, the big thing to me for Marshall is, you know, who, who is the threat at wide receiver? You know, Corey Gamage, what he transferred to Memphis, then Purdue, then UCF. I mean, it's, you know, so it's kind of a long road for him. But uh, anyway, um, you know, kind of interesting to see um, what else kind of evolves around that quarterback position. But uh, they played great defense last year. I think that'll uh, we'll see that again this year as well. Expecting anything out of out of the Georgias, right? They're both replacing – uh, quarterbacks, Georgia. Well, Georgia state isn't, that's where Darren Granger. And I got to remember it's Darren Granger. I think I named him Danny Granger. So I have to apologize in person. He'll be there. Uh, so Darren Granger, we'll see if he, he needs, he's got a lot of room for growth. He's a super duper athlete, but you got to pass for more than 2000 yards in this day and age. You got to be closer to 3000 yards. Uh, and, and you got to replace Kyle Van Trees, uh, without the interceptions. What do you think about the Georgia schools? Um, I, I like both of them. I mean, I, I love Sean Elliott down at Georgia State. You know, he's been there a while. I, I, I love what he does. 
uh, you know, as a coach. Um, and yeah, they're, they're going to get, they need to get more production out, out of Granger. It's going to be hard because Jamari Thrash transfers to Louisville. So their best wide receiver right. option is, is now gone. They got to find somebody else there. Um, you know, defense is what surprisingly let down Georgia State last year, which is why they'll bring in Chad Staggs at D coordinator, you know, former of, uh, of Coastal Carolina. Um, so I, I hope they battle and, and get back to where I think they should belong. You know, I think they had, what, three consecutive winning seasons and after and then last year went four and eight. Um, Georgia Southern, on the other hand, I, they're my dark horse team in terms of a team mm. out of the East that, that I think could really contend. And, and I say that because, you know, look, comes down to quarterback and what Kyle Van Trees did was amazing. Um, but everything I hear about Davis Brin, the, you know, the transfer from from Tulane there is is, is really is, is really something special. Um, you know, so I, I think if they can do that, um, I think their, you know, their defense is something that needs to improve as, as well. But I think outside of that, I think they got a schedule that sits out pretty favorable. Um, uh, and again, from what I hear about Davis Brin, I think he's a guy that can maybe pick up right where Kyle Van Treese left off. And with that schedule, I think they can have a good year. Yeah, I, I... I've already spoke to Clay Helton about it, but usually all these coaches are guarding. You get a lot of coach speak. I don't know if you saw him after the App State game last year, but it was just unadulterated joy. They played this monstrous overtime game. You know, App State and Georgia Southern are the rivals, despite what Georgia State would think. Uh, and when you see a, a coach just, you know, enthralled and encapsulated in, in the joy of coaching in a win – right? Because it was a great football game. It was not, it's not beating Nebraska. It's different than that. Uh, and it was just a lot of fun to see that because Clay Helton has been through the ringer, right? He'd been through the ringer. So yep. I think that's great. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Talk well, about that. All and, right, and let's switch. Also, Go ahead. Also, just real quick on Georgia Southern. I mean, for him to come in and institute an offense that was really different from anything historically <laughs> they've done. They've been a triple option team. 180 and degrees. Yeah, 180 degrees. And I know what Tyson yeah. Summers came in, tried to do it unsuccessfully. So all the whole fan base is, nope, we're going back to triple option. Clay Helton, I think, said, you know what? It's, it's much harder to recruit these days when you run a, a triple option only scheme. Um, but again, I think for them, uh, you know, their defense is what has got to get better as well. I think they're last in the Sun Belt in, in sacks, only 16 takeaways. So I think if that defense can improve a little bit, they get some guys back and uh, continue the production on offense. I think they'll be OK. Even Army is going away from the triple option. I'm not even going to know right. what I'm watching this year when we're watching West Point. So. <laughs> well, and, and, and uh, Dave, quickly, that, that, is a, that is a result, I mean, quickly, of what is the product that's coming out of high school anymore. And there's just not right. as – I mean, around here, there was, you know, a bunch of schools you know, when I was in high school that ran triple options. Cole Rain used to run a triple option, and it was hard to stop. But even they don't do it anymore because – why? Because – these kids don't want to want to don't want to play in it. To be honest, right. you know they want to catch balls. They're seeing all the you know the NFL and, and college football and how you know these guys are putting up these massive yards and plays and all that. And if you're a wide receiver, you don't want to get one pass thrown to you in the game. You want to you want to catch some balls. So there's just not the, the feeder programs. And let's face it, that triple option is something that you got to work, 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 work on just that over and over and over. That handoff, the mesh, the pitch. And instead of doing that, guys are, are catching balls now. So it's hard to find guys that are really ingrained in that system. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I think it's more exciting product right now. Yeah, my first go around in Lafayette, I was calling games in Kaplan, Louisiana. They're running the wing tee. Could not stop it. You knew yeah. what was coming. Well, sort of. Uh, but you could you could not stop it. All right, quickly, ODU. They went and got a, a new OC uh, from Fordham. They brought in the Fordham backup quarterback. Apparently, he's going to get the job as the ODU quarterback transferred out. Uh, I mean, ODU is on a losing streak heading into the season. They had a big win over Coastal and haven't won since, although they did give South Alabama a nice battle right after Thanksgiving to wrap up the season. What do you see from ODU? Yeah, it's interesting. I actually uh, was on the call for that game, that upset over Coastal at Coastal. And that's something you never mm. saw coming. And uh, what's the, the that big tight end they had that was drafted? I forget. He didn't even wind up playing. So I'm like, there's no way they can do this. And they just pound, right. pound, pounded them with the run. Uh, it, it was pretty cool to watch. Um, yeah, so they'll bring in Kevin Decker from Florida, uh, from Fordham. And, I mean, they were like 49 and a half points per game, one of the best offenses in the FCS. So – you know, we will see, you know, um, it's just, it's just a lot of it. It's so hard to really predict anymore because a lot of it 
comes down to, you know, there's so many schools are getting transfers in, you know, you got a new transfer quarterback coming in. How, how's he going to work out? How's they adapt to the system? Um, you know, so uh, they, they do get the, the linebacker, Jason Henderson back, which is a good thing. Nation's top tackler. Uh, but it'll be interesting to watch that offense and, and see how that thing can work and hopefully put some more points on the board. All right, let's take one more time out. We'll come back to wrap things up. Still lots to talk about with Rocky Boyman, uh, and we will do so right after this. But first, I wanted to say thank you. We are continuing uh, to grow. I need, I need, we need 40, what is it, 44 more subscribers to get to 400 before August 1st. And then maybe we can get up to 500. But please pass it along. That's like four, by, by my math, isn't that like four subscriptions per school? That's it. Four prescriptions per school. Actually, less than that, uh, if we can do the math. So if we can get that in, in the next week and a half, which is all through Sunbelt Media Days and kind of leading into camp, uh, we can be at 400 by July 31st, August 1st, and then really go for 100 as hopefully we get the coaches in, maybe we get some players in, and we start previewing uh, the season uh, as it's actually starting to happen, right? As, you know, when you, you can talk about recruiting, but once you start talking about, you know, starting positions, the two deep, the starting quarterback, what direction the team's going in, uh, unfortunate injuries that are bound to happen, uh, that could change a whole lot when it comes to uh, the season. And so hopefully that'll garner more interest. And I'm hoping, really hoping, that by, I guess, Friday or even Saturday morning of Labor Day weekend, that we will be at 500 subscriptions and you can help. Please pass the word. It is a huge, huge help. Uh, also, don't forget, you can also get Locked On Sunbelt on wherever you get your audio podcast, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, iHeart, wherever you get it. Just search for Locked On Sunbelt and uh, you will find this podcast. All right, let's get back to it. Let's wrap things up. One more segment with uh, ESPN Plus co-host for the Sunbelt Media Days, Rocky Boyman. All right, we're doing Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. We'll switch to the West with Rocky Boyman, author of Rocky's Rules. All right, uh, lifting less than two times a day is not worth your time. You need to get in at least uh, hey, three once uh, workouts. <laughs> let's go to the west uh, you know same thing with uh odu is texas state they went and got out like the top offense in the country from incarnate word gj kinney uh, and he is turning over the roster he's got at least 37 maybe 38 transfers in that's 51 to 52 new players still got some time to bring in some new guys uh how do you incorporate all of that uh, and and they're going to try and light up the scoreboard whether they can stop anybody uh, is going to be interesting but they're bringing in a whole new team. They brought in five new offensive linemen. Again, it's, you know, how long does it take for these guys to mesh? You know, they got, you know, did the spring and now they brought in a bunch of new guys. Uh, it's going to be at the very least Rocky. It's not going to be boring. That's my, that's my take on Texas state. It won't be boring. And I'm excited because I, I love what the, what he does offensively, but let's face it. I mean, that's what Jake Spavall has done the last two years, right? Is, is live in the transfer portal and, and it didn't work out for him. Now, I, I I defend the use of the transfer portal because I just think that's the nature of college football. And right now, if, especially if you go a couple of years where you're getting transfer kids in, there's no nobody you're developing. There's no one there that you're hoping in year four can can all of a sudden be a player. So he's got to do the same. Kenny's got to do the same and go to the transfer portal. Uh, it's just the fortunate or unfortunate nature of college football. But you know, for him, it'll come down to, you know, I guess Malik Hornsby will probably be the guy at quarterback. Now, that offense he ran, I mean, they threw the ball around a lot. And from what I've seen of Malik Hornsby, he's a little bit more of an athletic runaround guy. So I, how does that exactly mesh? I mean, that offense, when he got the job, I went back and watched Incarnate Word a lot. And I mean, it's a lot of, I mean, it's up tempo, it's fast, a lot of bubble screens, you know, a lot of what, you know, what they call constraint plays where, you know, they kind of hold you hostage on one side of the field. And if you get a little bit out of your fundamentals or you try to cheat something, then boom, that bubble screen gets turned into a go route and see you later. So it's a pretty interesting and fun offense. Can Malik Hornsby grasp that thing? Is it in his nature to, to be able to do that? Um, and again, yeah, with so many new guys, it's a tough task. But uh, I think Texas State should certainly be fun to watch. Also, really not going to be fair. Lindsey's got junior, about a 25-year-old quarterback. Malik Hornsby, this is going to be his real first action he's had in college football, yeah. backing up K.J. Jefferson. So the, the comparison is, what's wrong with Malik Hornsby? Well, 
you know, he's basically playing his first time. Lindsey Scott Jr. has been in, was in college forever, like winning whatever the Heisman Trophy is uh, right. uh, at SCS yeah. last year. Uh, all right, let's talk about the top of the conference because I think the power has shifted a little bit from the East to the West. Troy won it last year. South Alabama's going to be good. Where is the fighting Will Halls with Southern Miss? And, of course, you got the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. I think John Summerall ruined it for everybody. He may have ruined it for himself. What do you do <laughs> after you win a conference title in your first year? And, right, they had two losses. One of them was to Ole Miss on opening weekend. So maybe he didn't even know what he was doing, you know, until the second half yeah. of the game. And then they lose on a Hail Mary to App State. Otherwise, that could have been a really ridiculous season for John Summerall. They do have to replace uh, Carlton Marshall, the NCAA's all-time leading tackler. And – you know, a couple other guys on defense and what is it? Jake Andrews at center. I may not be right, but they got to replace the center. They got to replace the center. So they do have some spots. Uh, and of course, you know, the quarterback play, they, they were rotating quarterbacks last year uh, at Troy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Troy, first of all, I mean, they were preseason picked number three in the West. I mean, that's what I love about the Sun Belt Conference. You know, it's like App State last year was picked to finish first. They don't make a bowl. Troy's picked to finish third. They all are, are a skosh away from going undefeated and having a, a – I mean, and it still had a, an amazing season. Um, I, I, I just – I love talking with John Sumrall when we had the opportunity to last year. And you could tell – he, he was excited about the team he had, and, and I could tell he was a guy that was going to get that culture right. And, and, I mean, that team was stacked with some amazing players on defense. Uh, they were just losing a lot of, like, one-score games, I, I feel like, you know, in the past under Chip Lindsey. But he came in, did a good job. And, again, they get, they're going to get their quarterback, Gunnar Watson, back. He's got to reduce those interceptions from 12 down to, like, six, you know. Um, so that's going to be a key. Uh, obviously, Kamani Vidal, the running back, returns. Um, and defensively, they still get some guys returning. You mentioned Carl Marshall, uh, Will Cholo, the, the great D end or D tackle they had. He, he won't return either. Uh, but I, I think Troy, uh, again, you know, I, I mean, from a schedule standpoint, I think if they figure out wide receiver and Gunnar Watson can reduce those, those reception uh, interceptions a little bit, I think they can have another great season. All right, let's go to South Alabama because I think this is one of those years, all right, if it comes together for South Alabama, it could be a Cincinnati-UCF kind of season. Uh, they do start in New Orleans against Tulane. The winner of that game could be a top-20 team. And then two weeks later, they go to Oklahoma State, which is in flux uh, as well. I don't know if you can have an opening game that is a trap game with uh, Tulane hosting South Alabama. I'm told it won't be because they lost a game to Southern Miss in the same way. The thing is, they're playing Ole Miss. Tulane's playing Ole Miss week two. Now, normally that wouldn't be a big deal, except in this case, Ole yeah. Miss is coming to New Orleans. So it's a huge <laughs> deal. Uh, and right. so it's, it's going to be tough to focus on South Alabama. But, I mean, if South Alabama is 2-1 and one after three games, or God forbid 2-3-0, uh, and oh, they could be looking at one of those great seasons. I think they got to go to JMU. they got to go yep. to Troy. So the schedule is not necessarily easy. But they're bringing back like 18 to 22 starters. Two of the guys that are coming back were hurt last year. So that's like 20 out of 22 starters. Rocky, I'm going to tell you right now, if they go three possessions without scoring, something happened. That, that's just a, either penalty or a turnover because they really, the offense needs to be more consistently explosive. And maybe with Carter Bradley in his second full season with the Jags, it, it will be. I agree. I mean, again, you return the quarterback. When, as I said earlier, when I'm looking at a team and how they're going to be and ranking them, who may finish first and all that, first thing I look at is do you return your quarterback in, if he was productive the season before? And and they do that. You mentioned 10 starters on defense. They'll also get Keith Gallman, the great safety back uh, from injury. Um, you know, you get your top running back back. Um, you know, they, they won a lot of close games last year. Um, but, but I love King Womack. I, I think he, I think he's a fantastic coach. Um, it, it's just, that I think they got to get more production out of that offense. I mean, I, I think that's, that's the main thing. Uh, can Carter Bradley take it, take a bigger step there? Um, you mentioned their schedule. Yes, they are at Troy at James Madison. I, I think they're the team to beat in the West. So answer me, Dave, why are they, there is their over under win total at seven? It's like seven or seven and a half. Why is that? Seven and a half. I, I, that's exact. I have no idea. I got no idea. I mean, I, I, I guess they could lose to Tulane and uh, Oklahoma State. I, 
There's no way that this team should not win nine games. I, I yeah, Minimal. exactly. Minimal. I, I, it's going to be a disappointing season. Five losses on their schedule. I, I really don't. Yeah, it's wild. I don't know. Yeah, and there's some we don't. Yeah, I know. I'm 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 exactly. I'm I'm waiting until right. Everybody's healthy coming out of camp. Someone may have put a little bit of cash about a week before Zion Williamson went down a few years ago to begin his career. So we're just going to hold off until the end of uh, the end of training camp. Uh, all right, let's talk about Will Hall from Southern Miss. They also had a, a rotating quarterback situation that may be resolved heading into this season. Uh, they finished up on a, on a high note with a bowl win in Mobile at the Lending Tree Bowl. Uh, and they get Frank Gore Jr. back, the, uh, the all – purpose all everything super back actually won not one but two games a couple years ago as a quarterback yeah. everybody was either hurt or had covid and it was up to frank gore to win and they did so they actually won a couple of ball games without a quarterback uh that's how resourceful yeah. will hall is uh and he is mississippi through and through it appears he has gone from regular coffee to decaf he's calmed down uh, a little bit maybe cutting down the monsters or the red bulls to to one or two a day uh but he's intense and uh, he's a lot of fun to watch and he's got a lot of enthusiasm behind him at southern miss yeah and they had a great season i mean i mean their defense led the way for him they led the sun belt in sacks and tfls and i i think i know they'll lose a couple guys but i think you know that production on defense will return for them it, it, it's who's the quarterback. Is it, is it Zach Wilkie? They, they need more production, need an established guy. You just absolutely have to have that. In my opinion, in today's college football, you got to have an established, no doubt. He's our guy at quarterback. And right now, at least on paper, they don't now, maybe, you know, Will Hall knows something we don't, he's seen something in, in camp and in practice. Um, but, but that's what they need outside of that. Everything is there again, our, our defense that returns some guys, one of the best running backs in the entire nation, Frank Gore Jr. Um, you know, they'll lose their top uh, wide receiver, um, Brownlee, if I'm not mistaken. So they'll have to, right, you know, fill, right. in, fill, in, fill in there. But, um, you know, again, I, I, if they can they can find some magic at quarterback, look out. They could they could contend in this thing. If they don't, then I, I think they'll kind of remain at that middle of the conference kind of team. Well, same thing goes for the Raging Cajuns. They got an interesting quarterback situation. Uh, ben Woldridge got hurt in practice, rolled up on his knee. Uh, we'll see yeah. if he's ready to go. He went to the Manning Passing Academy, so he's obviously upright, so that's good news. Uh, you got Chandler Fields, the experienced, uh, and then you got Zeon Chris, who played in the bowl game up in Shreveport, and he got all the reps uh, in spring ball because Chandler Fields had an appendectomy and Woldridge was hurt. So he got all the reps. His right shoulder is feeling pretty good. Uh, uh, what do you do? Do you go with the kid and maybe take it on the chin for a month or two, but now you may be set for the next year and a half for two years, uh, or do you go back to one of the experienced guys, uh, and, uh, and roll with that? I, I would think, I mean, I would think Woolridge, if he can play now, again, that, that ACL happened late, but on the other hand, th these kids are, are returning from ACL injuries so much faster than, than they used to, um, so I, I think that's that's the key right there. If he's not ready, yeah, maybe Zion Chris, you know, is a guy that can maybe provide him a spark a little bit. And you say, hey, look, we're going to try to battle through this first half of this season, but we think he's the guy. And you know, and and looking the next year, the, the problem is in today's football, Dave, as you know, tomorrow never comes for these coaches. There's no time uh, right. that, that they're allotted to, uh, Hey, we're going to give you five, six, eight years to build this thing. And then if you don't, then we'll move on. No, it's, it's a year or two, you know, that kind of thing. So very interesting. I, I know Louisiana should return one of the better offensive lines in the Sun Belt, So that's a good thing. Um, I think Peter LeBlanc returns at wide receiver. So uh, they got some pieces there, but you know, it's, it's same thing. I think we've said for about every team, what's the quarterback situation. And that's going to tell a lot. Well, probably the same thing going, although I guess uh, ULM. Let's wrap it up here with ULM and Arkansas State. I think both actually have their quarterback situation figured out, but both these coaches, experienced coaches, Terry Bowden and uh, Butch Jones heading into year three. ULM may be the toughest job in Division One football, and Butch Jones has done a good job of recruiting. It just hasn't translated uh, to on, on the field. How can – both these teams, it's not only about winning in some of these cases, it's about being competitive. And a lot of times last year, Arkansas State was not competitive. I, I agree. And, um, you know, and he certainly, I, 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 I see his name mentioned as one of those hot seat coaches. And I think that's warranted, you know, from how they've recruited 
to what's he won five games in two years. It, it needs to translate more. Now I will say this, you know, coaching or I should say turnarounds can happen fast. Right. And, and they can happen fast right. in the sun. I mean, look at John summer, look at Troy, right. Again, they're picked to finish third. Weren't a team talked about boom. All of a sudden they go 12 and two Kane Walmack seemingly overnight kind of started getting that thing turned around at South Alabama. So turnarounds from the, from the precipice of a cliff can happen quickly, especially in the Sun Belt. That's good news for Butch Jones. Um, and then for, for uh, ULM. Yeah. I mean, you know, they had their quarterback boys at Chandler Rogers. Right. And it, it, it's so frustrating right. for coaches. I, I, I could tell you a story, you know, Scott Leffler is a friend of mine. He's a coach at Bowling Green. And he was, you know, has built, 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 and was getting ready to return a, a really experienced, really good team, and then 15 guys transfer, right? And it's kind of the same thing has happened to Terry Bowden. You know, they had some good pieces, some things you can build on in, in a decent season last year. I think they won four games. Um, and then the rug gets pulled out from under. But, you know, I, if, I guess if anybody can do it, you know, hopefully Terry Bowden's a guy, um, and we'll just have to see. That's just such a tough gig there at ULM. Well, I think Jaya Martin is coming to Sunbelt Media Days. He's the guy uh, at Wright. ULM. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Jaya Wright. Yep. He's Jaya Wright. Yeah. Oh, Jaya, uh, Jaya Wright. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, he's Rocky yeah. Boyman locked on Sunbelt. All right. I will be in the gym at 5 a.m. Tuesday morning. I'm going to be disappointed if I don't see you there. I will well, call you out on should, the radio. Yeah. Well, f at 5 a.m., I should be coming in for my second workout before my right. second practice. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll see you. We'll get the, we'll get the lift that, in. And, I, <laughs> and I think they have the Peloton bike, which I'm going to take full advantage of. He is, nice. uh, we went a little bit long. Really appreciate Rocky Boyman's time. He's uh, on ESPN. He is uh, ESPN plus he's a host on uh co-host on uh, what WLW in Cincinnati. It's like WWL in new Orleans goes like halfway up. And then he's also the publisher of, uh, Rocky's Rules. Uh, great uh, coffee table book. Really appreciate your time, Rock. We will see you in New Orleans. Thank you so much. Dave, you're the best, buddy. You do a great job on the Locked On Sunbelt podcast, and I'll talk to you soon. Look forward to seeing you.